Hello everybody, welcome back to IJN vs. Nieder. Uh, this is going to be episode 8, and today we're going to be uh, continuing our assault against the Onyx Watch. However, before we do that, I have another ship to show off, so uh, I might as well. And yeah, so here she is. This is a Kuma class light cruiser, but this is no ordinary Kuma class light cruiser. This is none other than Torpedo God herself, the Kitakami. So uh, yeah, spoiler alert, she doesn't actually see any action this episode, which kind of stinks. Um, although I do believe I begin construction, so I figured I might as well show it off. So uh, yeah, here we have the Kitakami light cruiser built in 1924, I think, commissioned as a Kuma class light cruiser. Uh, she's armed with four of these 152 millimeter guns, which, if the stats look familiar, it's because they're the same guns on the Chikuma. Uh, so it's got four of them, their firing arcs are kind of questionable, and they don't have that much anti-aircraft firepower, but that's fine. Um, she also has six 25 millimeter triple AA guns, so this is actually the first ship that has these, I think. Uh, these are from the More Simple Weapons mod, which you should definitely check out on the Steam Workshop. It's an amazing mod. Um, but I'm going to be, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of these later on in the campaign. Um, and then, of course, the uh, the reason that uh, this ship, I even am using this ship. 40 Type 93 torpedoes. Uh, these are not too, too powerful in terms of from the depth standards. They are pretty good, though. 16,000 explosive damage. Uh, pretty solid, but of course there's like 40 of them, um, so any submarines, surface vessels, anything, pretty much any ship this encounters is not going to be having a good time. Uh, and then also these aren't actually on turrets, these are on spin blocks. So if I, um, if I spawn in a target real quick. Yeah, so they'll rotate out sideways. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, and then the torpedoes just fire out the sides of the ship like this, one after another. They're all hooked up to the same controller. And they have the depth set just low enough that they will slip underneath the ship without uh, having any friendly fire going on. Uh, so they'll all just launch one after another like that and proceed to the target in a massive stream of death and destruction and blow it apart. This isn't too good of an example because the bastion's very small and doesn't sit very low in the water. But yeah, that's like half a torpedo salvo. And the bastion is very, very dead. So this will be really useful, especially later on once we encounter stuff like the lightning guns and the steel striders who use... Uh, submarines to try to escape. Submarines will not have a good time if they encounter this this thing. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the campaign. First Battlefleet's blockaded. By oh our my god, that poor cruiser. You do have a big hull ship. Alright. 
right, we will spawn everything at once, and I will... Oh, shoot. Oh, this is the fleet that I used against Deepwater Guard, which means it doesn't... And it's running on resources. Wow, sharing is caring, guys. Come on. Share your resources. I'll be there. Uh, and I'm fighting a Harlech. Which is worrying because it's very expensive and I spawned in very close range for some reason. I don't know why I didn't try to flee a bit. 200 for The Harlech doesn't have big missiles. Oh, shoot. The Harlech. Oh, wait, no, those look like decoys. And it's not very deep. Okay. This might not be as horrible as I expected. I definitely should have spawned my stuff in further away, but without further ado, let's get into it. Ah, oh, this Kaba just got its entire stern blown off. It's not good. That was cool how the Harlech split its fire, though. But it is now sitting here, dead in the water. Not completely, but... You know. Hey. There we go. No wonder my shots were just going everywhere. The Harlech has lambs, too. Oh my. This could get interesting. Oh no, this Kaba might get absolutely destroyed. It's the... No longer able to move. What is the muzzle velocity in those mortars? Wow. It is immobile and being fired at from... Point blank range. Oh, geez, this storm is insanity. Huh. The Laughs the non GPU ocean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do I have my. I literally have no GPU ocean because I can't run it. I mean, you don't have to deal with. It. These waves are probably what? This destroyer here. Yeah, destroyers would Long. suck during. Any storms that you come across. This destroyer is 81 meters long and it's balanced upon the top of a wave. These are literally 80 meter tall waves. Dude, turn down your wave factor. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to stay on one. I'm going to transfer my ship to over here. Oh, I'm already on the ship. Where's Shikuma? And it's all dark, Those so I can't even see anything. Waves. Those are tsunamis. The entire ocean is just looking like. Japan after 2011. That's some repair. I mean, on the, repair the, thing. the good thing is it's completely throwing off the um, crime cannons of the uh, hard like that we're fighting, but also I'm not sure where my APS shells are going. The torpedoes are still working somehow. I wonder if the 12 inch guns, high explosives, are even able to make it over here. I think this Kaba is going to sink. What? Oh, did this. Oh, it sunk from actually being underneath the water because it. The waves bamboozled it. Dang, there goes the uh, Kaba class. Let me transfer this Kaba, which is struggling to move in this massive deluge. Oh no, it's all capsized. There we go. As it plows through a 100 plus meter tall wave. This is insanity. Harlech is taking quite a beating, though, and it can't hit anything with its cram cannons thanks to the immense wave action. Sakuba's still firing all of his guns, hopefully accurately. Oh, I know. Uh, the Harlech has a heavy armor front. Interesting. <coughs> Did not know that. Oh. Uh. Maybe I'll send the Kitakami once I build it over to this division to reinforce them. 
more torpedoes incoming. That turret just died. The Harlock has uh, either really good uh, firing restrictions set on its guns or multiple AIs. Because it is splitting its fire between multiple targets quite effectively. There's one more. Oh, the, I'm on the other Kavik class. It could destroyer. be the firing restrictions. Yeah, it probably is. Still, though. The heat of our and hesh of the uh, six inch guns is taking its toll. Looks like there's uh, three functioning gun turrets left. I can't even see what's over here. It's lobbing 12 inch HE shells though, which are missing thanks to the wave action. Oh no, do not attack my destroyer. Oh, is the storm finally going to die down? Yay, now we have giant waves, but no longer instantly swamp your ship sized waves. I think I have to throw off the cram cannon shots, though, coming out of the hard life. Which is always good. Dang, though, we really lost the Kaba, which has been with us ever since the very start of the campaign. I'm going to have to take special care to preserve the second Kaba. Pair of 12 inch HE shells missing there. Hash from the secondaries hitting home. There's literally hash fragments flying through these turrets, so. I'm what? I'm actually able to see my ships. Yeah, this Harlek is no longer combat capable, really, but it's taken a beating and managed to... Uh, as I say that, I jinx it and it dies. Still, though, I did put up a fight. Rest in peace, IJ and Kaba. I may not actually get to build a, um, the, uh, Fuso this episode. So I will not have enough money, but I will hopefully be able to build Kitakami as soon as I finish construction of, uh, Hide. Where is dead Kaba? Should I repair it? I have to send it all the way back. Should we get rid of the... Uh, have to repair at a dock guard rule. Um, I think it's kind of a good rule. The main issue, though, is if, assuming you want to route all your resources to the dockyard, you have to keep changing the directions of your transport cargo lines, yeah. which is going to get precarious, which is also why, even though I've defeated the Deepwater Guard, I haven't built another dockyard yet. I'm pretty sure there's a resource center over there. The reason why I ask is because it would greatly increase our ability to produce ships, because we don't have to wait for resources to get to our building yards. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should scrap that rule. I thought you were talking about repairing a dockyard. Not I, meant, I meant build. I meant build. You can, you can repair at any place that has resources. You just couldn't build. I, th I think we should be allowed to build. The internal hum. 
Did I? I, I misheard you, but it sounded like the internal honeycomb of a terrier. Yeah, I'm terrier for. Oh. Oh, carrier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for a, for a second I thought you said the honeycomb of a terrier, like a type of dog, and I was like, wait, what? I build doggo. Yeah. He said he had him filmed. Yeah, feel f I I I'm not recording the Discord audio, so. Yep. Yeah, probably. Well, oh shoot, the Onyx Watch weather is still stinky. Anyways, uh, here we have the second Battle Fleet versus uh, some Onyx Watch. Mumbo Jumbo Bumbos. Oh, look, the weather's changing. Is it going to improve or get worse? Oh my god. And this is The terror of the seas. Yeah. Each other. Foolish boat. Get away. Stop it. Kaba, why do you always do this? Congo sailed into a rock last time, and this time it's sailing into its own destroyers. Yeah, turn around. I, for, I keep forgetting to re remove the repair tentacles from the Kababa class, which is kind of cheaty, but okay. Look, now I'm in degraded mode. What is this? Congo's entire mask got chopped off? Dang. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm just going to be narrating to myself. This Harlick is taking a beating. The previous one was only fighting mostly cruiser caliber guns, with the addition of four 12-inch guns, I guess, but... It was pretty tanky, but when faced with the 14-inch armor-piercing shells of the Congo, it's not as not doing very good. Will this cram shell result in a hit? Of course not. Uh oh, I started lagging again. What happened? Also, where's Tsukuba? Oh no, the cargo's sailing right through the middle of these three Onyx watch ships and just getting cram sh taking cram hits from all sides. Is this a large missile ship? Wow. Lame. Wow, dude. Oh, Kyo can target it, though, with his forward guns. Thanks to the firing restrictions. Never mind, it's gone back to pummeling this dying Harlek. Uh-oh. Game freeze. What's going on? Aha! More combatants have arrived. 
the Takuba has entered the scene, as has the Poseidon. I has rearwards firing. Kinesian Emperor built a Poseidon? Whoa, that's actually cool. Kinesian, dang. The Poseidon, the Onyx watch, uh, I, it just spawned in, and I was checking it out. You know, because it's a really well-built, good-looking ship, and there's a sign saying Connie built it. Well, that's cool. Connie, if you're watching this video, good work building the Poseidon. Dang, he even mimics the, the cannons onto the uh, diff guns. Wow, that's... Very good job, Connie. And it's decently uh, expensive, too. Well, kind of stinks that you have built this whole amazing campaign ship only for it to be destroyed by the power of the Imperial Navy. Go get him, Japan. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, that is a lot of, uh, whatever these are. High explosive shells. But it's true. Oh, shoot. Sakuba's not on a move routine. HE from, uh, Sakuba's guns are probably gonna end up being more effective than the AP from, uh, Congo. Although Congo does fire a good amount of hull point out of its, uh, Rear guns, so that could work. Oh no, Dodge Kaba! No! My poor destroyer just got shotgunned. Poseidon doesn't look too good though. It is a sailing vessel fighting uh, World War One and interwar era capital ships though, to be fair. Very good. Congo looks so weird without its mast. I can't believe they, it's the first salvo from the heart, like, just bam, chopped off the superstructure. Well, as the front of the Poseidon disintegrates, I am on board the shotgun's destroyer. Oh, this Onyx Watch Fest also has lambs. Interesting. Congo is taking quite a bit of damage here. Mostly just due to its, uh, mostly just due to the upper works, though. I don't think it has any gun damage. Where am I? All the way in the stern. Go get him, Congo. Oh, it's a big missile. Congo's still directing its fire onto the Poseidon, which gets us okay. As I hop down the deck and cram shots are pounding everywhere. Maybe I can get onto this aft superstructure bit here. Oh, no. Can I make the jump this time? Yes. I would stay on a funnel, but it's smoky. Here, I'll stay on top of this. Or I won't. Staying on top of the remains of the forward superstructure. There we go. It's a good vantage point. Alright, looks like the uh, Poseidon is now dead. Tough luck, Connie. Uh, this thing is getting blown out of... Oh, okay, never mind. It's just a wave action that's not rendered in. Battleship's getting airtime. That is Onyx Watch weather. Just hang out on top of the rear 14-inch gun turrets. What are you shooting now? This ruined little craft. The Onyx Watch has a lot of pretty good, well-designed small craft. What were you, a pioneer? Pretty good looking. Effective for your cost, but not against entire battle cruisers. And there we go. Four more Onyx Watch capital ships are at the bottom. 
And the second battle fleet has triumphed again, except it's no longer even in its zone, so go back over there. A lot of damage to that one Kaba took since it's kind of shotgunned. Well, we are approaching 30 minutes, so I'm going to cut it there. Sorry for not uploading over the week. I know I would uh, said I would upload a video like Monday or Tuesday or so, uh, but I had other plans come up because it's uh, it was my spring break this week, so that was pretty fun. But, yeah, hopefully I can resume a normal upload schedule if I ever even had something like that. And next episode, we should be taking on the Onyx Throne. We are getting pretty close to there. So, uh, on that note, I will end the episode. So, have a good one. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you do. And uh, have a good one.